day, my friends. We're starting our Elvis week here appropriately at the front of Graceland. I thought, you know, what better way to kick it off than coming over, taking a look at the house. A place where undeniably Elvis spent some of his happiest moments and sadly where he surprised everyone by passing away at the age of 42 years old. You know, as sad as it is to think about, that is one of the things that I think about when I see the gates of Graceland right here is that last image of Elvis being brought out in the ambulance. Now for many years, people were wondering what happened to that ambulance and now we actually know. It's kind of a crazy story, but that ambulance has had quite a tale. Elvis was engaged to Ginger Alden at the time of his passing and she said up until the day of, you know, he was still talking about their future together and what they were going to do and then she found him in the bathroom, hunched over and they eventually had the paramedics come and when they could do nothing here, they brought him to the hospital down this path. Now, that ambulance is actually in a museum now. A YouTuber named the spa guy for years was trying to find out what happened to this ambulance and he not only tracked it down, verified that it was the ambulance, but he purchased it and opened a museum. So we're gonna go see that today. And that ambulance on its way out actually hooked one of the music notes right there and pulled the music note off. See if we can't see the little lip on the ambulance where that happened. I'd say we found the right place, wouldn't you? We have a little surprise also. Well, okay, actually two surprises. One surprise is that the museum that the ambulance is at is Tiger Man Dojo, Karate Dojo. That was Elvis's, that's where he used to do his karate. And the spa guy is gonna be here. He wanted to meet up and he's going to tell us about this museum and tell us about the ambulance. And I even wore the perfect shirt for this. But look at this, I walk in and this is the first familiar face I see. Memphis Mafia kid, I watch your YouTube channel. I'm Jordan the Lion and uh, I also love to, tra I travel all over the world and I'm a big Elvis fan so I, I love learning about Elvis and hearing all the stories and you of course have a lot of great stories I, well, that you talk you, about on your, your channel. I've seen your videos, man, I appreciate that. <laughs> thank really you. Do. Thank you so much, glad y'all come. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, like I said, if you haven't, I pre appreciate the shout out from you. And, yeah, absolutely. And you, you keep, you tell a lot of great stories, personal stories with you and Elvis, not just the same old stuff that everybody's heard before. You actually have firsthand stories with him. Yes, so. sir. I mean, all of it is, is personal stories from, from my family, my mom and dad, uh, my brother and me. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's no one story that's that's been the same and probably won't be. There's just yeah. so many out there. Do you we, enjoy we love doing it. That's well, I was going to say, do you ever get tired of talking about Elvis or do you enjoy this time of the year when people are so excited to come and hear more about him? Well, just like you said, it's uh, th especially this time of year, Elvis week, over the years, I, you know, from the time he was born, I've met so many people, uh, know people from all over the world, and it's great seeing a lot of them, sharing the time, the stories with them. Uh, so to me, this is a big time. Uh, yeah, we all, I, I mean, we love doing it every, you know, on our videos. And a guy who brought so many people joy that never even got to meet it's him. All, it's all from one one great man, and and we love that man, as you know. And it's so cool to see you in here because one of the things I love about this is. Billy is affiliated with this and this is a, you know, a passion that he wanted to see that ambulance and then as a fan, as a lover of history, found this thing and then helped make it a museum that other fans can now go enjoy and it's not just sitting in the back with weeds growing all over this thing anymore. That's quite an accomplishment. It is uh, that with, with the, uh, I mean, we're very proud of it with the way we have it set up. We have a lot of other things. Uh, it's, it's about the karate part of it, King mm -hmm. Uh, this was his ori original building from 1970 to 1974. Uh, and he was well, ninth degree black belt, right? Or was he even further than yeah, that? Yeah, correct. But his seventh and eighth degree black belt he earned in this building. That's so uh, cool. And like I said, you'll see a lot of, uh, of, of stuff from King Ray. Uh, we have a family case back there. Spy Guy has... Uh, and Patrick have a case. Uh, we also have from Tennessee Ted Young. I don't know if you know him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you are you here very often? Where like I'm, if people come in here, 
visiting Memphis throughout the year, will they possibly run into you? Yes, sir. I, well, I'm actually here uh, basically every day. That is awesome. Except for the days we're closed on, so. Great. Take a look at this. This is so great. I mean, it's literally yeah. the same makers of the same furniture that Elvis had in Graceland. So they even have some of Elvis's actual shirts. Look at the ruffles. You can see there was one right here on the sleeve, and then right there. And both of these shirts are from 1970. This one is also. I see costumes. They made all the jumpsuits and all that stuff for him. Pretty cool. Look, you can see their maker tag in there. So they told us we can hang out here, and uh, and we're literally looking at the karate room. <laughs> That's so cool, man. That is so freaking cool. Good on them for doing this. So Billy, it's so nice to meet you. We've talked over uh, a Zoom chat, but um, yes, we did. <laughs> you, you, more than just a guy who's a fan of Elvis. You're more than just a guy who's now affiliated with his museum. You made this happen because you were out vlogging, kind of like doing your Elvis loving research, and and how to you know basically tell people what what okay. came about. So what happened is I do very much like you do. I go around the country and tell tell stories. I happen to focus really on Elvis. I do a few other things, but mostly Elvis. Um, and what I like to do is something that I learned from Adam, the Woo, and that is he'll go somewhere and show you this picture and this is what it looks like today. Mm -hmm. That really caught my attention the first time I saw that in a video. Uh, it was Adam the Woo when he did Back to the Future, the very yeah. first one. I, that just, when I saw it, I went, wow, what a great way of telling a story. So, um, cause every go, building has a story. Yeah. Every building has a story and there's photographs and Elvis was probably one of the most photographed people in the world. So there's tons of material on him. So what I do is I'll take a photograph and try to figure out where that happened at. It just so happened that there's, uh, Elvis had an idea to record, uh, or to create a movie called the new American gladiators. And what he was trying to do was he loved karate. It was a big part of his life and he wanted to get other people fired up about karate. So he uh, had budgeted $125,000 to make a private movie that he would try to get distribution on. And part of that was filmed in this building. So there was photos in this building and there was movie footage or video footage of him in this building. So I drove here, I bet you, when I, this place is right up the street from Graceland. You literally have to go buy it to go to Graceland. And I guarantee, I, I'm not gonna exaggerate this number. I stopped here 40 or 50 times to find, see if I could find somebody here on my way to film other things. This was not being used at the time? It was just always locked up it or what? It was a machine shop. Okay. The people that owned the building lived in Missouri and they would come here when they had work around this area. Okay. So what they would do is come here and they would stay. There's an apartment upstairs. They would stay in the apartment and they would do their work. They built um, automation for, uh, for manufacturers. For uh, uh, It was called controlled systems. So they had three phase machines in here and big uh, forklifts and, and grinding machines and cutting machines and all that kind of stuff. And so I came here one day and found somebody here, knocked on the door. They were very nice. It was a husband and wife. It was actually the, the son and the son's wife of the man that owned the business. It was father and son business. And I told them what I was doing and they were like, yeah, you know, come on in, you know? So I made a video. I show Elvis in the building. I was able to, to do lineups and say, well, he was here. Did they know? Post, they all? knew. Okay. Because people came from all over the world to here. That's what I but wonder. They literally would come here, but they were never open. You know, they're rarely open, but people would catch them and they'd let them come in. Oh, that's and cool. So, um, so when we got done filming, I, I filmed with him and I talked to his father and we were just having a casual conversation. He was like, well, you know, I'm thinking of retiring. And I said, really? And he said, uh, so I said, so does that mean that the building may be for sale one day? He said, yeah, that's possible. I said, tell you what, when that happens, you call me first. So the end of 2019, I'm going to say November, I got a phone call. Uh, his name's Ron. And Ron said, Billy, this is Ron. Building's for sale. And I said, okay, Ron, I'll see what I can do. So I got together. Uh, can, I, can I ask you, was it real estate price or was it Elvis 
was it here was, it was price. real estate price uh memphis it was very reasonable okay um it was something that we could afford i have a business partner pat thompson and i'd love for you to meet pat yeah and uh pat and i pulled our money together and some other resources and we bought we paid cash for the building so it's paid for because we didn't want to deal with the bank and all that kind absolutely of stuff. it's always the best so we bought the building with the idea the first time i came in here of course i'm in here just filming and and it's just like every Elvis thing. When I go in, I look and go, oh man, Elvis was here. He was here. So I'm, I'm, I'm fangirling for the. But, but you better. must have had you some know? idea because you can't just go buy every building that Elvis ever did something in. Like you must have thought you had a plan for this well, in some way. I mean, this one is, is a legitimate karate thing. Nobody has touched on the karate part of Elvis. Nobody. Yeah. It's two miles from Graceland. You know, but I didn't choose this location. Elvis and Conrad did. Yeah. You know, they chose it because it was close to Graceland. But there was other aspects of it. I mean, I've seen other buildings, but, but there was something special about this particular building, especially there being a movie shot here. You know, yeah. there's, there's footage here. And a lot of things happened in this building. Bill Wallace, Superfoot, taught here for a couple of years. Conrad had the building from uh, 70 to end of 74. Elvis got his seventh and eighth degree black belt in this building. Um, and so there was a lot of history here. Red West uh, practiced here. Dave Hebler, a lot of big time people yeah. worked out here. And so I just thought it was a great place. So when we came back, when Ron called me, I came back and we looked through the building. And then I'm trying to figure out how I can make this a museum. So what you see is what I could see in my head. There's no real drawings. Now, I sat down and did some mechanical drawings of the layout of the walls and stuff. But what you see, we created by hand. And we were going to hire people. Pat and I uh, had enough money that we were going to hire people to come in and do the build out. Because I, I own a company in Nashville. I can't be right. here five days a week, you know. And Pat owns a, a company in Missouri. And, uh, but we started trying to hire people and get people over here. It was right in the middle of COVID. We bought the building in uh, November, 2020. And um, so it was right in the middle of COVID. No, either you couldn't get anybody here or people that you could get here were so crazy expensive. Yeah, materials just, and stuff. And yeah. it, was just, I, it, was, it was just crazy that the thoughts of it. So I, I told Pat, I remember looking at him one day and I said, Pat, if we're gonna build this thing, me and you're gonna have to build it. Yeah. And I, luckily I know how to build things and uh, I don't know why I just do. So we started tearing walls out and do, did this and Pat and I built most of this by hand Joey Smith That's was, so cool. was part of it. Um, Danny worked. Uh, Trey worked. Uh, we had fans that worked. Mika Gavin, uh, Mika Matthews, uh, and her family came and worked. Uh, Sally Hodell that wrote the book Destined to Die Young. Her and her family came and volunteered and worked. So we had a lot of people help us along the way. And all to give this back to the fans eventually, For which is such a cool thing. Fans. Yeah. Yeah. The whole idea here is, is several things. First. This is for the fans. If you've got something cool that's a real Elvis collectible and you want to show it off, you can put it here and show it off. If you look in here, these shirts are and these scarves are from uh, Lisa Marie. She lives in Washington, D.C. She has a giant collection. She has a, over 40 scarves. And you can see these things are, are uh, pristine. displayed <laughs> just beautifully. Yeah. And so she sent these, and I have to give a shout out to Ronnie McDowell. Uh, she sent these to Ronnie in Red Bull and Springs and Ronnie brought them here on his tour bus for me. That's so simple. I didn't have to go get them because I was here working. So it's even Ronnie McDowell got involved. In yeah. This, you know, a, to try to a help little bit of, out. it's nice to see that it's the fans and that it's not, you know, nothing against EPE, but it's like, you know, it's cool to see the fans going, this is what we want to see. We're doing it our way. Right. And that it's for the fans by the fans. That's what we say. And we're not saying what, what you just said is right. We're not saying don't come to Graceland. We're saying come to Graceland come see us too. Yep. 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 And in this particular room, you want me to tell you about this room a little bit? I do. Okay. So we call this the Tiger Den. Now, most of you, some of you would know, uh, would know the Jungle Room, if you will, in Graceland. Uh, the Jungle Room was built later in Elvis's life in the 70s, and they chose to do a, a, a Hawaiian theme, if you will, tiki theme, um, and they chose Whitco Furniture. This furniture is built on the West Coast. It's still in business. Um, this is actually hand carved with a chainsaw. And the Whitco 
guy that created this in the 70s, he actually went on to teach his granddaughter's husband, his name's Ken Pleasant, how to carve this with a chainsaw. So Ken Pleasant still makes stuff for Whitco. They're still a real company. And we teamed up with them and we're planning on having some Whitco items here at some point. But in the meantime, I can't build this, I can't build the Tiger Den if I don't have Whitco furniture, right? Right. So I'm panicking. I ha I've got the room being built, you know, I'm finishing it and I don't have the stuff to put in it. So I reached out to Ken, he said, I'll help you find some. So we spent, this little bit that you see here was $8,000. Wow. The couch, uh, Trey and I actually went to Baltimore, Maryland to pick up. We bought it from a, a real nice lady out there. They, bought, they buy and sell antiques. So Trey and I though made it a filming opportunity. We filmed Roanoke, Virginia, Lynchburg, Virginia, Baltimore, Maryland, Washington, D.C., and Richmond, Virginia while we were there. And we picked the couch up. Incidentally, when I went out there, I thought I can go out there and rent a U-Haul trailer, right? Yeah. No. Nothing no available. U-Hauls. I had to buy a trailer Whoa. to get this thing back. So I bought two trailers recently. The unforeseen <laughs> adventures yeah, in being I mean, a museum owner, right? Wow. And uh, so we brought this back, and the first time I ever sat on Whitco Furniture, which I've seen a thousand times in Graceland, honestly, I thought it would be very hard. The first time I ever sat on this was in a storage unit in Baltimore, Maryland. I wanted to sit on it so bad we uncovered it. I sat on it right then before we ever loaded it in the trailer. And it is actually very, very comfortable. I love it's it. It's amazingly comfortable. Yeah. And, um, and I actually could kick myself early last year, maybe March of 2020, I saw a couch and two chairs come up for sale in Nashville for $3,000. And I looked at it on Facebook Marketplace and went, I'll never need that. What would I need? What would I do with it? <laughs> and so I didn't buy it because I hadn't I hadn't thought of this. Yeah, you know, yeah. I knew that this was going to be a hallway. The idea of this room is there's an upstairs. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna when the museum's finished, you'll go, you'll buy a ticket, go upstairs, go through, come down the back stairs, and this is how you get back out. So you're not going through the dojo. What was this room when it was the, the dojo? What would Elvis have used this okay, particular this space? Okay, so to clear this up, to give you an idea, that door was not there. That was a wall. So what it was, was this was completely from here to the other end of the building. This was a church sanctuary. That's oh. why it had the red carpet and why it had the paneling. Okay. This was a church from here, from that double door was the back of the church. And then when you went to the other end where the stage was, that was the stage in the museum. Okay. Or in, in the church, In the church, yeah. Say. So what we did was I, tr I made this room so you had a way to get out. Then I was trying, I was trying to decide, okay, well, what am I going to do with this room? And I Photo thought off. several different things. So I thought, you know, if I put this furniture in here, it'll be something they would enjoy sitting on be a great photo op it's a great conversation piece and so i just wanted to kind of give you that feels like you're really sitting in the jungle room this is not to take away from graceland go over there and yeah. look but you can come over here and sit but it's, i loved you know that you have this glass behind so you can actually sit here in the chair like we were doing and look into here and just kind of imagine class going on and you said you're going to have a we class. have karate classes here we do we have a karate class every saturday at 11. as more interest comes, we'll have more karate classes. We actually have Kong Ri, this was his dojo. This was Pasaru type karate. We actually have a six dan or six degree black belt. Uh, uh, black Dragon is his name and he is our instructor. And he comes here, he was taught by Kong Ri. He took lessons from Kong Ri. Um, and in the Elvis world, or in the, I should say in the karate world under Pasaru, Kong Ri's thing was to give people animal names. So Elvis's animal name given to him by Kong Ri was Mr. Tiger. Mm -hmm. So that's why we call this the Tiger Man Karate. So There's light on his feet. <laughs> because he was Mr. Tiger and he has the song Tiger Man, right? Mm -hmm. He's the king of the jungle. They call him the Tiger Man. So that's why we chose that. Now, this is not an Elvis only thing. We have karate museum. This is a karate museum. Yeah. We have Elvis. We have, uh, heck, I've got Jerry Lee stuff here. I've got uh Waylon Jennings I've got I've got a, several different things here uh that and are personal collectibles right but one of the things you have is I started my video kind of talking about Elvis being brought out down that driveway the last time anyone would see him alive or or yep. you know before he was officially yep. pronounced dead you have that ambulance have and a crazy ambulance. story to that August 16th 1977 Elvis was transported 
They got the call at the fire station, fire station number 29, right up Elvis Presley Boulevard here at 2.33 in the afternoon. They drive to Graceland, they go upstairs, they get Elvis, they load him, they take him to Baptist. Sadly, he did not survive. They did everything that they could do in that vehicle to try to save his life. Now, there's speculation that he may have already been deceased before he was ever put in the ambulance, or he died in the ambulance, or he died. Whatever you believe, they attempted to save his life with that Exactly. Vehicle. So I feel like it's an important piece. It's one day in a man's life that was a giant life, but it's still a piece of that life. Can we see that and you tell us how you found it? Because it's a crazy story. Absolutely. Let's go look. No, you were just saying like the yeah. June 26 connection to this, like go through all that. That's okay, so nuts. Their, uh, Elvis's last concert was June 26. It's just a, an odd date. We tried to do our grand opening on June the 26th, but we couldn't pull it off. It was too soon, you know, after opening. Yeah. So Elvis's last concert, June the 26th. Vernon died on June the 26th. The Colonel was born on June the 26th. The first night Elvis spent in Graceland, June the 26th. And the first time that Sam Phillips called Elvis and asked him to come sing, uh, a song at Memphis Recording Service, June the 26th. Isn't that crazy how yeah. that works out? That's, that's weird. All those things happen on one day, many years apart. Is it safe to guess what your combination lock is for your house and all that stuff? <laughs> wow. Wow, man. That's the one. That is, in fact, the one. And I had, I don't know if you watched the video with Bill Edelman. I, d I did. I, I mean, so he's, the, the, he's the curator of the Memphis Fire Museum, and he's studies this this is his right game. i mean i and and i saw like some of the things he said you i would have never thought of but it was like he had said uh 1976 the law changed the color that the right. ambulance could be so that gave you something to go on but the the two doors do you want to talk about okay so we the, can talk about that so there's uh, i had a guy come up the other day that was my, in my thinking when i look at this most of the time ambulances are very basic I think. You okay. would think. Or, so or, the door panel that you see on this side looks more like a wood grain. Looks a little more high end to me. The one on the other side is not wood grain. It's plastic, which looks less high end to me. So what I speculated was maybe this door was replaced and the other door was original because ambulances are normally not as high end as far as interior trim and that kind of stuff. So I had a guy that came up here and said, oh no. He said, that one over there has been replaced. He said, the way you know is up to 76, the door panel stopped. You see how that's exposed right there? Yeah. After 76, they go the full door. So that one over there is a 77 or higher. Now, how did you know that that was one of the characteristics of the Elvis? Okay. Number so six, I guess they call this number this six. This was Ambulance Six, but the way I figured, uh, learned about this was a guy named Mac McQueen. Mac McQueen worked at Baptist Hospital and he actually witnessed this ambulance come into Baptist Hospital, screech to a halt, then pull Elvis's body out on a gurney and take him in. And what he said was that Elvis's legs, or whoever it was, face was covered up, but their legs were uncovered. So that turned out to be factual with some other things that I found later. Um, anyway, the, he told me that when he saw this ambulance, what he said happened. Now I want you to think about how crazy this is because this ambulance survived in a time when there was no internet. There was no way to call, you know, you, you didn't even have cell phones. You had no way of communicating. So what ended up happening is he got the defib paddles. It took him 16 years for them to, to age out at the hospital. He gets the defab paddles in the neighborhood that he lived in. He was talking to his neighbor across the street, which was a fireman, and he was showing him the paddles. So the guy's like, man, that's really, really cool. He said, you know, I wish I knew where the ambulance was. I'd love to have that. He said, I know where the ambulance is at. My friend that was a police officer bought it. So it's one of these things where one person told another person. So he went to the house and looked at it, took photographs of it, and that was about 15 years before I met um, right. him. So when uh, so I took the information that he gave, I called him and said, hey, I'm on the search for that ambulance, I'm gonna find it. So he gave me some clues about where he saw that. So I go back to that house, which the people could have moved. You were All droning it even, you said you were looking in the neighborhood. Yeah, well, the, every time I would go back to their house, they would give me another clue about where it was. They told me the neighborhood it was in one time. So I actually went during the winter when the trees were down and flew my drone over the neighborhood trying to see it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what ended up happening was Trey and I were filming a story about Elvis with Rex Mansfield where Elvis dropped Rex off at a relative's house 
and there's a bunch of photos of them in a limo at this house. So we go to this house and knock on the door and say, hey, did you know Elvis was at your house and showing photos, which blows our mind. Yeah. And I didn't even have the where the house was where I talked to the people about the ambulance on the agenda for that. I have a list of things I filmed for that time. And so wasn't even on the list, but we were three blocks from that house. So I told Trey, I said, while we're here, man, we're gonna go ahead and ride over there and knock on the door. So I went over there and knocked on the door, took my business card out, wrote my phone number on it like I always do. And I said, ma'am, I know you were tired of seeing me. Cause I kept coming. I'd come, I had almost, I'd basically given up cause I didn't even put it on the list. What, were they, were they just sit, turning you down or what well, were you? Well, it was... turned out that they were estranged. It was, this was, this guy that owned this, it was his brother's house I was at. He died. So what had happened is it used to be at their house. It got moved to his brother's house. His brother passed away. So they were uh, giving the information to his widow, but they really weren't. So what happened is I show up at the door. I tell her what I'm doing. You know, I, I told her that she said, you know, you've come here so many times, your carbs, it was a stack. She said, one day I saw him and I thought, what is this guy doing? And it was a, one of my YouTube cards. You yeah. Know, says the spy guy and everything. So what I did was, um, she said, I got it out. I popped on YouTube. I looked and I started watching your videos and I realized what you, what you're doing. Yeah. And so here's her name, her address and her phone number. Go, go find it. Cool. And so Trey was with me. We drove straight there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when I pulled up, I jumped out and zoomed in on it and got some, at least something. You saw the, the right. roof, you said. In case I get thrown out of the yard, you know, but the lady was very nice and she came out. And we had a discussion about it. And I told her, I said, you realize that that needs to be in a museum. Now I didn't have a museum. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, and she said, yeah, it needs to be in a museum. And I said, so is it, does that mean it's for sale? She said, yep, yeah, it's for sale. I said, okay, well, let's talk about that. So I negotiated with her and I bought it and I got it in my possession. That was 2018. In fact, we found this on August 16th, 2018, 41 years to the day it was used. Wow. And that's right. Yeah. Else. And so I took it to my shop in Nashville, my hot tub shop, and it stayed in my building since 2018. We moved it here probably two and a half months ago. Okay. And I had to fix the steering in order to get it in the building. Which is also how you could verify that this was the Elvis That's another ambulance. Reason. Do you want to tell that? Yeah, I thought that was a cool. They disabled the steering. It was in ambulance. It was in fire station number one over at the Triangle over by Lauderdale. Which but St. Jude, the right? Triangle. That's right. And Trey actually discovered the triangle by talking to one of the guys that was Elvis's friend, said they played in the triangle when they were friends. And he's, right. he's got videos, go trotting with Trey. Yeah. And so um, that ironically, this stayed in that fire station in a place that Elvis played at as a teenager for, if you look at this thing right here, it says it was out of commission in uh, November, 1987. It was sold or auctioned after uh, April the 10th, 91. So it sat in that fire station for four years and they disabled the steering so it couldn't be stolen. And they actually called it on the paperwork, the Elvis unit. That is a fact. Mm -hmm. And this photo is a photo. The guy happened to be standing there. That guy worked for Kmart corporate and he was in Memphis and in between stores, he ran to Graceland because he wanted to see it happened to have a Polaroid camera. And when that ambulance came out, he snapped that photograph and, and sold that photograph in 1977 for $100,000. Wow. And then that pulled one of the music notes off from no, the game. No, that is, a, is false and I'll show you. Okay, yeah, I know. excellent. Because okay. I mentioned right. that earlier and okay. I was like, that was what they had said right. it happened. So this photo right here. This is a photo you've never seen before. And the claim is they pushed the, the gate open you can see the gates fully open when the ambulance is going in. Yeah. Yep. You see that big crink in it? Oh this yeah. This is a different photo from a different person. You see the crink in the bumper? You see it bent? Oh uh, yeah. Now yeah. look right here. I love the logo. There it is. Mm -hmm. And that was bent before this truck was two years old. This is a 75 model. And it had only been in service about a year and 11 months when, when that what the 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 uh, bill edelman said that this is the most important fire call ever taken in the city of memphis the second most important was martin luther king wow mm -hmm. wow i mean yeah people thousands of people lined the streets when they heard that yes, elvis. 
What was it like when you got to open the back of that door and look inside? Well, you know, okay, so let's back up. The poster that I just told you about, I bought that poster as a kid in 1977. So when I bought that poster and looked at that ambulance, never in my wildest dreams did it ever cross my mind that I would ever see it. Yeah. Much less own it. Okay. <laughs> I believe it. I mean, yeah. that's... Yeah. So and this was this was your this was the one thing that you really kind of the wanted holy to see. Grail of, of searching for Elvis stuff for me. Yeah. You know, and that's not a I'm not saying that to be uh, you know I'm a Christian. That's not a negative thing. Yeah. No. That's no. just a, a, a defining term, if you will. But you know, I discovered the bicycle as far as that yeah. goes. You know, my uh, you sure did. You know, our team discovered that. And Jordan, the crazy thing about this whole thing is. The day that we discovered this is the first day that I ride with Billy and film. I'm a filmmaker too. Yeah. That's so a fun. I had my camera, this camera, so I was able to capture the moment when he first I laid saw out. that. That was so great. Yeah. So, so it's like a great companion. Like yeah. I said about Dr. Nick, it, it's really crazy. Things happen for us. Yeah, <laughs> you guys have a great energy together. together. We get in things and do things that, yeah. that it, it's, it's pretty crazy. We find some pretty Sometimes we can't explain, stuff. but yeah. after that, yeah. man. Things that are meant to be happen. Yeah. Well, yeah. Look, I'll tell you this. We find this, my next trip, we find that book that you just filmed. That is true. Crazy. Yeah. So I, I'm, I was like yeah. two straight things. <laughs> two. You know? But this is the ambulance, and, uh, and there's a video on YouTube that you can find of the ambulance coming out of the gate. There's a video. So how did that video happen? The answer is, June of 1977, 1001 Truck and Van Ideas, they did a tribute to Elvis Van that was featured in this magazine. That van was traveling around the country on tour. On August the 16th, 1977, it was at Graceland. They were waiting for Elvis to wake up that afternoon to show him the van. And a guy that was on tour with the van had a video camera. And he was filming the van. So when you watch the video, you'll see the van in the video. And that's how we have video footage of this ambulance coming out. It's amazing how things like that happen, yep. isn't it? There's number six and right there. Here. And that's, I put that on there. That's oh, did you? Not, okay. Yeah, that's not original. And then this is the back of the ambulance. And the idea here is Grayson would be there. This would be what it would look like to the guys if they look back down to the gate right here. Do you ever, I mean, when I look at this, the, you know, the first thing I think of is this could be where his soul left his body. I mean, you just don't know. I mean, that's, that's possible. I mean, that's and, just like the last ride. Imagine the chaos in there. Oh my God. Can you imagine being a, a paramedic and being responsible for Elvis's life? Okay. So let's talk about that. Yeah. 1977, they weren't paramedics. <laughs> they were doing first aid. They're just firemen, right? They were firemen with the first aid kit. Ooh. That was fire. Mm -hmm. And think about that, Jordan. And Al Strada and, and Joe weren't necessarily, I mean, they weren't paramedics no, either. No. They were the one first on, on the scene after Ginger. So, I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. wow, man. And before the world knew. I'm going to ask it because I know people are wondering, any haunting since you opened the museum? Uh, no. Well, you know what? That is not true. I'm going to show you something. <laughs> Should I put this on camera? I don't know what you're about to go to. Okay. Uh... All right. So I'm going to show you something. We got to go back over here and let me show you.